Dude is back with another Baby Dude interview today. I have this guy. I got Chris Dowling. He is a screenwriter, director. He makes movies. Most importantly, he is a dad. What's right. up, man? What is up, buddy? Too much. Thanks for popping on with me today. What you got yeah, going dude. on over there? Um, busy day of wife telling me to clean the garage, which I was in the process of doing, and I will continue after this. Um, but I did notice in the meantime, honestly, I don't know what that is, bro. I get so self-conscious on these Zoom podcast things. Now. Look at that. Isn't that wild? I don't know. You it know, looks like a zit. I think, I think it's, I didn't even notice it until the podcast. Nobody would even notice. I can't even see it right now. You good. I don't know. It's so strange, man. I'm, I'm so self-conscious at podcasts now. Like whenever I, like when you do these Zooms, like I'll typically wear a hat now too. Cause I'm like, Oh, my hair doesn't, I just throw a hat on and you know, whatever. And then I'm like, I'm always like looking at myself and I'm like, Ugh, like there's stuff. <laughs> but dude, anyway. I totally hear you. Like I do homeschool, obviously like on zoom working with kids, dude, I never comb my hair. I wake up, take care of the kids. Some days I'll take a shower before I start, but I'm putting, I put a hat on it. Like that's just my, I am about to do, combing my hair and all that stuff so I, i've totally feel well, i think zoom, i think zoom honestly has made that like an acceptable like meet like meeting like it's not taboo to walk in i mean like you know i'm i meet with like these studio execs and stuff and now and they've got hats on and they're crouched in the corner of their house and you know not looking fancy or anything i'm like all right we're all we're on equal footing here we're all right you know like right. absolutely uh, well that's yeah. a good that's a good start to our conversation right there then is so you have you have two kids and yes. like you, I think you had mentioned they're, they're both going to school at home right now. So how is that like, I mean, we're all kind of dealing with it, but how yeah. is struggling like director guy here and dad right here with two kids like mashed all up? How is that? I will say, right so it was much harder in Los Angeles because I just moved to Dallas, right? So when I was in LA, we had like 1500 square feet of total house. So um, at the end, we were doing the distance learning and the homeschooling or whatever. Uh, we were all on top of each other. So, um, and I'm trying to write and be in a creative space. I would just put my headphones on and pray for the best, but obviously there's always chaos happening. And um, so that was tough, but now we've moved to Dallas and we've, you know, our, our home is more than doubled in size. So we have this, like I'm in right now is like the dedicated school room. So that's made it life a lot easier. And my wife has been crushing it. Like, you know, being like the homeschool teacher. And then we found um, here in Texas, we found a, like a homeschool that they go to on Tuesday and Thursdays with their homeschool kids. So they're getting together and hanging with kids. And then there's teachers that come in and teach them subjects then. So it's actually a pretty nice fit. And, um, and dude, I'm, so I, go, I go downstairs, man, and I write. And then if I'm feeling that block or it's just a little too crazy for me, they know when the headphones are on. They shouldn't come knocking. But um, I'll cruise out to a coffee shop and, you know, write. That's my job's easy from that part. I can, you know, so I'll go write at a coffee shop if I need to. But, um, but yeah, man, it's hard. Dude, and also when I'm at the house, if it's like, messy or something's out of place like i can't help it man i just i see something and i'll be in the middle and i'll just get up and i'll have to go fix a you know fix a painting or you know wipe off the it just whatever it get you know working from heart is home i'll say that. yeah it's it's super interesting like i think i really do feel like this has changed our lives forever like oh, we, yeah. we're realizing now when things get back to some sort of normalcy like we're still things will be more acceptable doing things from home and i think it's it's a good thing and a bad thing i think it goes both ways but yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's changed for a long time, for well, sure. For the entertainment industry, it's awesome, man. Pandora's box has been open. Like, you used to have to feel like you had to live, you know, on one of the coasts. And now, man, I can't tell you how many friends from high-level execs to, you know, actors and directors and writers, they've all bailed. And there's no, you know, now that Pandora's box is open, there's no jamming it back in there. It's like, you know, Zoom casting meetings, Zoom, like even the writer's rooms for TV shows now are done by Zoom. And they're actually more effective because... You know, when you have to sit down and concentrate for three hours versus you're in a writer's room and everyone's kind of screwing around and, you know, farting around and stuff. It's like, you know, that actually you get a lot more accomplished. And, um, and so then why? Like, why have all that commercial space? Why have these huge places when, you know, I've talked to some guys that run agencies and they're like, we'll just keep a conference room and everyone can work from home. And if we need a meeting, everyone goes to the conference room. And if not, you just bail. Right. And I guess the flip side of that too, which for all of us, it's cool. But then you think about like the owners of those buildings that are like, Oh, oh yeah. man, that yeah. sucks too. Cause like, they're like, I don't need all this space anymore. Like, Oh yeah. Commercial real estate and anybody yeah. trying to pay those taxes, the property taxes on that stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a bad gig, man, especially on the, on the coast, man. I mean, we're, we're fortunate here. We kind of opened up, you know, um, it's, it's a little more open here. So people are actually getting to get in and do some stuff. 
So, I mean, at least you got that going for you, but I've got buddies that actually have businesses that are like, um, actually four kids, um, like a, a Nerf battle arena. And they, he was, he was about to put it up in Woodland Hills. And then he was like, Erp. and so now he's got a shift. He's looking at here. He's looking at Indiana. He's looking at some other places just because of, you know, he's afraid to get a big commercial space and then he can't do anything with it. He's got to, you know, on the you never know when the next one will tick up and what a mess, dude. Yep. Um, real quick. So if people don't know, you've, you've, Done some great, like, great movies. Run the race that you worked on. Um, it's kind of a football, football movie, family movie. Uh, yeah. You worked with the Tebows on that, which is pretty. pretty yeah, it was sweet. cool. Um, where hope grows, and there's a new one coming out that I actually just watched last night. Make sure I don't get it wrong. The Man from Nowhere. Yeah, it's called The Man from Nowhere. Um, the Man from Nowhere. Yeah, that one, that one's cool too. I mean, it kind of. I mean, you know, it it it, it delves into like father son relationship, but it's like a you know an adult son. Um, you know, so, I mean, there's, it is thematic to kind of what we're talking about as fathering and parenting. But, um, I think a lot of us, even as adults, man, I've seen so many people in the screenings where it's like, they're watching it. And like, there's a lot of a piece of their relationship with their dad. They're watching play out on screen where it's like the dad has kind of bailed the family and was chasing work and chasing everything he wanted in life. And then, you know, now it's towards the end of his life and he's got this strange relationship with the son and he's trying to come back in and, and kind of rekindle it. And it's almost like that old cats in the cradle thing. Like now the kid is like, Hey, I, you know, you had your chance, man. And I don't want to do this. And then obviously it's about them rebuilding, um, you know, this, this, and it's cool because there's also this, as you saw, like a, a B story as Nick Cersei, who plays the father, he's an author and he so he basically writes this novel about a, a, you know, a noir detective who is trying to find his son from this, you know, from this gone rogue. And um, those two storylines kind of run together in the movie and then they actually start intersecting in a very cool way. Um, but yeah, man, we, and the crazy thing is we shot it all in eight days, which is m mind blowing. I mean, I, I remember the very first movie I ever did, which is a you know, fun little movie with Patrick Warburton. We had this great cast and we shot it in four, or 15 days. And it was like, I mean, that was like part of our pitch, like, cause we were going out and, and doing that marketing. It was like, we shot this movie in 15 days. It's crazy. And I'm like, all right, dude, we just cut that thing in half. Um, and we got this in eight. So very proud of it, man. You can watch it on Amazon. Um, you know, you can go, we have a website, manfromnowheremovie.com. Um, but yeah, we're just, it's cool, man. It's, it's interesting because it was like a movie between movies. So like the movies you were mentioning that I, I've done are typically like studio, they're in the studio system. So it's like, they're coming out in theaters and we've got marketing money behind it and all that stuff. And, um, and this one was just a little guy right in between um, that we made and put out there on our own. So we released it on our own. And we don't have marketing dollars of anything. We just have word of mouth. So very proud of it, though. Very proud of it. Yeah, no, you should be. Eight days, man. I mean, there's <laughs> there's things that I should have done in eight days that I have never. Like, <laughs> little yeah. things. Do the dishes. Wait, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys made yeah. a movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's pretty impressive. And to, like, like move on to that, like you said, this, this kind of the storyline of reconnecting and kind of losing track while being a dad. How have you felt? Because you had two kids while you were building your career. How yeah. did you, Chris, find like that balance of, I have my kids here, I'm trying to make movies right here, I got meetings here, like school yeah. here, like I just, just your take on that. Man, it's really hard to be a director because, you know, as soon as we are going to shoot something, I'm gone for three months, you know? Um, I mean, unless I'm shooting a movie in eight days, then <laughs> you know, typically. Uh, and that was, so that was really hard. And then I had a reality show um, that I had sold and I was helping show run, um, I had a long run. I feel like I was gone for maybe four months, but like they were very gracious and let me come back every weekend. And that was a crazy time because my oldest one at that point would have been two and my youngest one was having heart surgery during that time. And so like I came back for the surgery and I was there for that week. They let me stay and then I left and my wife had to deal with all that. And she, I think she was very freaked out and actually it's a pretty I think it was a pretty good you know a fair strain even on our relationship and that where and I understand it where it feels like it's to some degree abandonment because but at the same time you know like you said it's that balance of like well I got to go make an income so we can you know live but at the same time I think it's what we all deal with as fathers and husbands is like finding that balance and finding that support and um and so I mean yeah dude that's the toughest part is going away and then you know the girls like as I you know when I shot like where hope grows I was in Louisville and then I was in you know, Birmingham for um, run the race. And I just shot one in Nashville last year. And it's like, that sucks. So that's why I actually like writing right now a lot better um, because I'm out here. And fortunately I'm busier than I've ever been, which has been a nice transition to come into Dallas because I've, 
I've got a lot of work that's coming with me and it's, and, and it's right now it's writing, but there's a directing component that will happen later in the year, but at least it's kind of shifting over and my, and my girls are fully homeschooled this year. So we're supposed to shoot a movie in Nashville at the end of the year so they can just come with me and we can just go. So that's, that's the way to do it. If you're going to try to do this path, cause it's hard, man. It's really hard. I, I had some rough days on set where I was just missing my, you know, my kiddos and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure when you, if you get, phone calls from them and you're just like, Hey, I did this today or things that they yeah. accomplished and they're super excited about. And you, you're not there to give a hug and things like that. And that's the sacrifices that, like you said, dads and moms have to make. But I mean, how amazing is your wife? Right? Like yeah. I mean, the moms yeah, out there like, I, that, that man. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, I think part of it, I think the hard, like some of the hardest part wasn't even like missing stuff. It was like when, you almost become background noise where at first I'd be calling, they were like, daddy, yeah, yeah, all excited. And then like by week three, it'd be like, dad's on the phone. Hey dad, we're going to go play. It's like, yeah, right. I get it. I get I'm it. Busy. Oh. Yeah. So, um, but dude, I mean, again, it's, it's all, it, it is, but it's awesome because at the same time, like, you know, because of my kids and my wife and my family, like there's a legacy of the type of movies I want to make and, you know, and I want them to have purpose and I want my, my kids to be proud of them. So it's like, you know, so I, I, it all, it all ties in together, man. I mean, you know, you, you know, you have the kids and your whole paradigm shifts. Everything. It's like, okay. It's like, this is paramount. Everything else is below it. And um, so, I mean, so as much good as, you know, as much harder as it's made, it's also directed the path in some ways where, you know, where I'm, you know, it inspires me. And I, again, I want, I love it when her little friends come over and they've seen the movie and they're like, Oh my God, like they love them. You know, like they love the movie. She's got some of her friends that are still wearing run the race wristbands. And they're like, and that was, almost two years ago, you know what I mean? Like, like and it's, 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 so it's so it's good. Super- like I, I actually, <laughs> I went to that movie, I had jury duty <laughs> and I had like a three hour break. I was in Burbank and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go watch that movie. Cause I, I checked the times and I walked down there and watched the movie by myself and on my break. And so inspirational. Like, I think you make really important movies. Oh, thank you, man. I think, yeah, your messages are always really good. They're very positive. I, and like Run the Race had some rough spots for sure. But it's yeah. overcoming those things and persevering. And yeah, yeah, I think you make really important things for sure. Uh, thanks, man. And that's, and that's like, for me, I always like to show like, uh, you know, kind of more um, lived in gritty character, but characters that feel real. Like a lot of times in, in all movies, and especially inspirational movies, you know, characters can get pretty flat. And um, and so I just wanted to be like real people having real conversations, you know what I mean? And, I, and I, so that's always kind of where I start with when I'm doing these movies, whatever genre it is or whatever. But then like, obviously there's certain things, like I did a movie called Priceless that was about sex trafficking. And, you know, I did Where Hope Grows, which, you know, the Hollywood Reporter said it was the first American speaking film with the lead actor with Down syndrome. You know, awesome. Alex and I did yep. you know, the Asperger's series. I mean, like there's, so yeah, I mean, there's just things that like, have a purpose i think and 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 in things that like like in you know where hope grows which is probably the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart where it's like the the people in the special needs community and, the, and I, i've taught i mean I've, now i've traveled the united states and talked to all these people and it's really changed my life a lot of ways but they didn't have a hero on screen so like when moms moms had had boys with down syndrome and they told me their kids wanted to dress up as produce for halloween and that was when I was like, dude, that is awesome. And so they were just dressing up as a grocery clerk, you know, like, a, and, and, but that for them, that was their hero now. And I was like, dude, that to me, that, like, I'm getting goosebumps. Like that's, that's what gets me excited is like, okay, cool. How do we tell that story and not make it feel like, Hey, this is a movie about down syndrome. It's just a movie that has an individual that has down syndrome in the movie and we can kind of experience it through that. Right. And showing that they like their life is important and they can kick ass right like oh dude the, I, bro it's hilarious it's hilarious Dave, so david is a 20 you know 21 year old boy at that time when we were shooting you know young man and so but his character is kind of like docile but sweet and all this stuff but the real david who is sweet he's also again a 21 year old boy so he wants to talk about girls fighting whatever <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of moments in the movie where he would get so frustrated because like the bully was saying something to him. And I was like, dude, just, you know, and I have to tell the whole crew, I, got to, I stopped the whole crew, guys, guys, David, the actor is going to allow this to happen. But just so we know, David, the real David would karate kick this dude in the face. And you'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. Now we know, go. But we had to do that like three or four times where it was like, dude, I'd be like, David, I totally get what you're coming from. And you would totally do this differently. But produce, because you're an actor, 
you're going to nail this as produce. And so, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's no different, man. He's just a dude. It's great. And I think like you guys did that first, like you said, and I don't know if you saw the movie Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, with yeah, of course. Buff. Same deal. Great. Like very feel good. Very fun. Yeah. It, those need to be out there. One billion percent for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do your girls think of you? Like your dad, do they, do they like, oh my God, my dad is, he makes movies. He like, he knows all these actors and people like, what, um, what do your girls think? It's, it is funny because they, um, I don't think my, my, I mean, I'm, I mean, again, I'm Joe Schmo filmmaker. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, but I do think it's funny. My, my girls, friends, like we just moved to Texas. Like as soon as they find out that I'm a director or whatever, you know, they'll, they'll Google or Wikipedia and see, you know, my, the pictures come up from premieres or blah, blah, blah with you. And then they think it's super cool. But you know, my girls, it's funny. My girls, my girls think I'm pretty cool. I will say I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a dad that uh, is pretty engaged and I like to mess with them and embarrass them in all the right moments. I mean, I, I, I try to embarrass them every morning, every Tuesday and Thursday when I take them to school and they're ready for, they love it. They act like, <laughs> they don't think of, dad, don't embarrass us today. Like reminding me to embarrass them when we get there. So right. Well, and, you know, 100%, I'm going to figure out something to say or do or yell across the room. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, so we have fun. And I, I, so I think they think I'm pretty cool as a dad. But, How old are they? Uh, 10 and 13. 10 and 13. Okay. Um, but it is funny because I do know a lot of the actors that like her, my 13 year old daughter has crushes on. Like, it's hilarious. Like her best friend is literally about to have a birthday party. And she didn't even know this, this, this was, this came up like not even like a warranted conversation, like out of nowhere, her, the, her birthday cake is literally the face of an actor that I first moved was my first roommate in LA. But okay. that's like, that's her, that's her literally, that's how obsessed she is with this guy. So when my daughter was like, Oh yeah, we know him. Like here's pictures with my dad with him. And they, you know, they are. So and, funny. Yeah. So it's like, so then, then I earned cool points from her friends for that, you know? But then you're also just dad. Like, hey, I'm this definitely, is my goofball dad. This is like, because I've been around you and your girls uh, a couple of times. Like, yeah, I'm definitely goofy with them. Man. Yeah. And, and, it's, and we have fun. I think that's the best way to be. Yeah, yeah you have to. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny. Like, I've, I've talked to athletes and a couple of UFC fighters, whatever, this and that. And they're all just like, yeah, they're very unimpressed by like, yeah. what I do. Cause I come home and I'm just dad. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, do you feel like your daughters are like going your footsteps? Are they interested in making movies or is it something that like they see you do it, but they have their own complete. Cause I always wonder about like, I like sports. So like my kids playing sports, how hard do you push? So I asked, I asked the athletes that and things like that, but how does that translate guess- to movies? Funny, I don't know, man. I mean, they say it, but then they don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, I want to do this. or I want to be, you know, and they all, they always like, I want to be in your movies. And I'm like, all right, if you want to be in my movies, you need to go get into like a little theater class and make sure you really like it. And, you know, you love it. And, and then we'll figure something out. And of course, then it's like, nope, okay, don't have time for that. I'm doing you know, vol- <laughs> volleyball and dance. And then I'm like, all right, well, then you don't want to be in the movie that bad. My, my biggest thing with them is like in sports and everything. And I'm a big sports guy. You know, I played college basketball and I still am very you know, active in playing sports, even though I'm, I'm, I'm an old man now. Um, but like is what sports teaches you. And, and that's my big thing is like, you know, like my one girl today, like she, she twisted her ankle um, and she's got soccer practice time. I'm like, well, you're, you're going to soccer practice. No, 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 I can't do anything. I'm like, no, you're going to sit and you're going to watch because you're part of the team and you've got to be there. To, and, but so like, to me, it's those lessons that are way more important. And, and cause I don't think they figured out what they want to do. Obviously like it changes every day. Like they want to be a vet one day and then they want to be, you know, uh, at some point, one of the reasons they want to be like a subway sandwich artist. I mean, like they find the randomest things, you know, <laughs> like, um, so, so I don't know, man, I, it, but, but I would steer them toward, like, I try to help my daughter when she's doing writing or like my, especially my 10 year old, like when she has a creative writing assignment, like we'll, we'll run through it and she'll be like, Oh, this is the story I want to tell them. And I'm like, Oh, cool. That's great. How can we say it, you know, more creatively or let's that character. I feel like you've heard that character before. Like, let's think about what can make that character different and she'll, she'll embrace it. And my oldest one, she just wants to, she's like, I hate anything that has to do with work. I'm getting, you know, I'm just kind of rammed through it all. So don't even talk to me, dad. I, oh, actually, that is even worse. My oldest one, when I try to help her with writing, all she ever did, I mean, she's 13, she's a 13-year-old girl, but she's just like, I'm sorry, I'm not a professional writer like you, dad. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, literally, I'm just trying to help you like not have a run on sentence right here. Like, it's very basic what I'm trying to do. Right. But, every, but you know, but I can't get anywhere with her on that one because, you know, she just is like, every time, oh, I'm not a professional writer like you, Dad. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Mom, your mom, your mom can handle you on those. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, over here, this one. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the little one right now. You get the big one. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I hear that a lot as well. Like, it doesn't seem to fall in. I think it is positive. And I think the older they get, the more they see what you do, which is really cool. Yeah. And I think they grab it. I mean, obviously I think they all gravitate towards that, you know, I mean, except for my dad, he, he was a SVP of an insurance uh, company and he was like, don't ever do insurance, son. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Just don't, don't do it. it. Not okay. that insurance didn't provide a great life and that, you know, sure. my, dad, my dad didn't rock it and was a rock star, but like, you know, it's just like, Hey, there's, there's a lot of pressure in that and you got to find something you love. I think. If you can't, really, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate because I get to do what I love. I will say that. Like, I, I don't take that for granted. Um, but at the same time, it's like, that's what keeps me going. Because if you're an independent filmmaker making inspirational films, like, you're not breaking the bank. I can tell you that much. I mean, it's like, it, but it's funny because like in Dallas, people like, you know, they assume, oh, man, yeah, you must be so rich. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I, you know, I sell cars. I'm like, I guarantee you, you make more money. Than I, <laughs> I guarantee you. So. It's, it's funny with the job thing, too, because my dad uh, ran grocery stores and he was like, he's kind of the same. He was like, he, he put his shoes on, went to work every day and didn't love it. But those are the heroes, too, man, that just like buckle down, go sure. to work every day for 40 years and put food on the table. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool when you get to do something. Well, well I think, and I think that, I think that um, pendulum can go too far the other way, too, where it's like our dads were like, you know, they would, like you said, they would just kind of buckle down. They would find that one career path. And that usually typically that with that one company and you would just, you know, stay in that company and, and that, and then, you know, and then like kind of our generation, I feel like our dads were kind of more like, Hey, you gotta be responsible. You got to, And then I feel like now you get a lot of these kids coming out that are real young, but super entitled that are just like, they only want to pursue whatever makes them happy. So they jump job to job, career to career. And I mean, I think, I think there's probably a nice, in between, I agree. You know, where our father, I, where probably our generation was a little more, where our parents were like, hey, you don't got to do this, but you still got to take care of business. You can, you know, you got to find the in between. Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to jump job from job, trying to get in the NBA. Like it's, it's. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> good time. <laughs> oh man, I don't think we ever played basketball. We needed to play basketball, dude. Basketball's my jam. Yeah, me too. I still play. I still got a league up here. We, we, we never did. We, uh, well, you know what? If you ever come visit Dallas, come hey. stay over here at the house and we'll go, we'll go hoop. Plan on it. We'll go hoop. That is, I will say that is one thing I have, I have found that um, I think may be gone in my pandemic is um, pre-pandemic, I could still dunk a basketball. And then being off of it and being 43 uh, every uh. year, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it anymore. Oh, well, so. at least, you, how tall are you? Six, three and a half. Six three. I'm six foot. I could only dunk a tennis ball. That's all I've ever done. <laughs> so. yeah, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm definitely I've got the size for it. But man, I just it was like I always knew it was gonna go away one day. You know, it's like oh, one day you won't be able to do it anymore. And you're you're I'm at that age. Do I still have hope that I can? I'm 36. That I can dunk. Is there is there still hope yeah. out for that? That's yeah, gotta be gotta, dead, right? You gotta go get those strength shoes, and then I think you can pull That's it off. Right. This yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are bad boys, man. We might when we were younger, my brother did those. And he was like five eleven. Dude, he went from not being able to dunk and then dude, he was smashing. Oh, gotta get on it. Got to get on it. Um anything else rolling out? Movies coming out. You had the the movie that just came out, the eight day film shot movie. Um, yeah, what's what's next? So um so got another movie we shot last year, which is a karaoke uh, comedy, um, feel good comedy, of course. I'm very excited about that. It's called Roll with it. Um, it opens with the Steve Winwood song, Roll with it. Um, and um, dude, it's a blast. I'm such an 80s freak and it has like this 80s throwback vibe and a lot of 80s music. I got Huey Lewis in there, Aria Speedwagon. Awesome. Wang, Wang Chung, Winwood, some other, I mean, oh, uh, Built the City, Starship. So um, so it's, it's fun, man. The music's fun, it's fun characters. So I think that's gonna come out in theaters in the fall. Cool. Um, we, we, we would have already been out in theaters pre-pandemic we had a plan but every obviously that kind of shut everything down um so i got that one um right now i'm doing the little jimmy dickens story which i don't know if you know who little jimmy dickens mm -hmm. is but it's very strange he's like revered in nashville i mean he's like a god and but outside of nashville people don't know him that well he was he was the longest tenured act at the grand Ole opry 
Okay. So like if you go to the Ryman Auditorium out there in Nashville and you were, you know, the Opry was until like whatever, 76 or 80, I don't know, whatever. But you're walking down the, the side. It's like there's bronze statues. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's Waylon Jennings and Hank Williams, Minnie Pearl or something. And then you turn the corner and there's the box office and there's one statue there. And it's a little four foot 10 man named little Jimmy Dickens. Awesome. And, um, so I got, I'm doing his life story. It's really cool. It's about him and it's basically him and his wife's story. Uh, but it takes place like 68 to 71 Nashville country music, Grand Ole Opry. Um, so that, I, th and I think we'll end up shooting that this year as well. Um, and then I have a musical um, that is already slated, already has the financing, which is supposed to shoot in the summer um, that I wrote. And I'm, I'm slated to direct. Um, that also strangely enough takes place in downtown, uh, downtown Nashville. Um, yeah, man. And then there's just, there's a couple other projects that are, um, Oh, I've got this really cool football movie that has an A-lister uh, um, uh, in his company uh, attached. So it's a true life story, also set in like 71. Super cool, super excited about that one. I'm not directing that, just writing it. Um, so there's a lot, man. There's, there's yeah, man, you're busy. Yeah. People, yeah, I, I like all your, obviously your previous movies, I'll list underneath this and people can go check them out and watch them. They're very, like I said, they're super inspirational. Go check them out, watch them. But I'll keep my eyes open, man, for this other yeah. stuff. Yeah we, got, cool. we got, yeah, we got all this coming out. And then, you know, Alex and I have a movie that is, uh, um, I, will, I don't know what I can say, is is ready to go. So um, awesome. very Yeah, it's been really cool to, like, see you guys, like, ascend, man. Like, it's pretty cool. And I, I guess I knew you guys from, obviously, we were, you all were working and doing your thing. But to see you guys yeah. making your own movies and writing, it's badass. Very uh, cool. Thanks, brother. Yeah, man. It's good. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's good times, but it's that, uh, it's, you got to have that cowboy gunslinger attitude and you got to have a strong woman behind you because there's a lot mm -hmm. of, a lot of droughts. Sure. Know? But yeah, yeah. Uh, dig when it's a, uh, wait, what's the saying with the gold? Wait, strike when it's hot. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I blew that. Yeah, I think I you strike the iron when it's hot. <laughs> gold, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, wait, the golden rule is he who has the gold uh, makes the rules. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> No idea. Well, Chris Dowling, thank you so much for joining me today. This is really cool. Uh, it's really cool to catch up and yeah, talk man. about your girls and dad. Dude, just dad, anytime. man. Anytime. Let's, uh, let's do it again. And then that's an open invitation for the uh, Dallas shootout here where you should come down here. We go hoop. Hey, where's my – I had a hoop up here before. We'll have a shootout for sure. Don't lie. Don't lie. Dude, I haven't, I haven't even touched a basketball in like a year, the longest of my life. Yeah, well, it's, it was funny because, you know, when I got here, the gyms are open, but, like, I had a very solid crew back in L.A. that we would play every three – we played three times a week, and, like, they became, like, brothers, you know, like, there's about, I would say, ten guys, and it's just, like, bam. And um, Why was I not in there? I'm playing every week, too, man. God. Uh, it's Valencia, man. You had to, you had to, you'd have to drive up to Valencia every day. But I'm Granada Hills. That's, like, ten minutes. Oh, yeah. That's actually not that far. <laughs> well, guess what? When they're back, they are an awesome group of guys, and they'll be every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturdays we play too. Now, I don't know if I can fill your shoes, though. I don't know if that's a – can I do that? Is that <laughs> – No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but what I was going to say is I got here, and, you know, the gyms are open, but it's like I've, – I've gone and shot a couple times, but, like, it just, like, I'm, I'm missing that, my boy. It just yeah. didn't feel right. So I haven't really played yet, but um, we just started a basketball league last Sunday. So Good. I'm Very cool. Back in. Very back cool. In. Well, again, thank you, baby dude out. I will list everything below. Check out this guy's movies. Come on. Thanks, brother. All right, good to see you, bud. Bye.